Hello. Happy Monday. I took a day off. Now I have 45 if I want to accomplish uh, 100 episodes before the end of the year. But that's not that title. Because I think I went four or five days without taking a break. And all in all, that's more than enough time to accomplish everything. So, since last we spoke, I went to see the new Ben Hur movie. Actually, my speed a little bit. You know, <clears throat> after having seen it and then looking back at some trailers online for the original Ben Hurt, which was roughly about 60 years ago, about, about three years shy, but it was uh, with Charlton Heston, who was a very big actor back then. He did a lot of uh, religious themed films like The Ten Commandments and such. And there's some others I don't recall. But after having seen that <clears throat> and seeing some of the trailers for the old Charlton Heston film, I would say that the sound is definitely better. The acting is definitely better. <laughs> Or it's just a different genre, or just a different time frame of acting. I do think the acting's better, though, overall, in this newer one. Sound was definitely better. There were a couple of things I did not care for, and they were kind of minor things, but I think they did ruin... Ruin's the wrong choice of words. Interfere with the quality of the film. Uh, one is during a chariot race. Morgan Freeman's character is yelling at Ben Hur, uh, trying to tell him what to do. Be careful, this, that. And they're supposed to be in a stadium with hundreds of thousands, or at least a hundred thousand people watching. And with chariots crashing and horses galloping and so much noise and there was really no way from a realistic standpoint that Morgan Freeman that Ben Hur's character would have heard Morgan Freeman talking to him and then the other one uh, was at the end after this movie that had nothing but orchestral music in the background at the end of it suddenly you hear this woman singing a very contemporary song and I think the reason for that was they were trying to get a song prepared for Oscar buzz type thing but I think that ruined not ruined I think it interfered significantly with the mood of the film and sort of took you out of it not every film has to have, if you're trying to get nominated for an Oscar, or if you're trying to get nominated for an Oscar over keeping the mood of a piece, I think you're missing the point. So I didn't care for that. I started uh, to fill out some more questions on OKC, it's a dating site. And my friend who I went to the movie with, on Saturday, um, she's been on Tinder. So I went on Tinder yesterday and sort of signed up. I've talked with one person already, I've exchanged a couple of messages. And I just realized I'm looking for something really specific. I think I know what I'll, I think I know when I will find it. And part of it's going to be where I'm at in my 
mind and my body now because I'm really putting in more effort now to being physically active again and getting back to where I used to be. And I can see little changes and developments in that, which I'm happy about. But it is a, a process. And once you get there, you don't just stop and go, okay, I'm done. I don't have to do it again. You have to maintain it through the course of your life. Hopefully you maintain good and well, solid health, so that you can do that. But I'm in one of those ages now, never thought I'd say that, <laughs> where you realize that your weight and how your body works are significantly important, are significantly impacted by how much activity you you have. Uh, when you're younger, obviously we all recover fairly well from injury and our metabolism is not necessarily as slow. But now, when you get into your mid-late 30s, you start to realize that they are impacted. Some people aren't, but the more dominant portion of society, at least in America, people are. So, I was looking at some of those on OKC, they have your profile, your pictures, a questionnaire, and then your personality. And when I clicked on personality, it would tell me what I'm more of or less of. And it said that I was more arrogant, more polite, um, more political, more conservative. And it's really strange because I guess conservative suggests that you want to be more I don't know I think conservatism conservatism is sort of one of those things where people say you're not as open-minded well if you were to read some of the answers I gave a lot of it's very open-minded but when it comes to political things I'm not conservative, I'm more conservative because I don't like uh, excessive regulations and laws. I believe in smaller government. I believe a uh, state government should uh, create the majority of regulations for the state based on how the population of that state feels. And it should not be based on every other state because really every state is different in their own right. Some are very similar, obviously, but there are significant differences in some of us. And I think that should be based on the population. And then the beauty of that would be you can go live in the state that matches your ideology the best. But the way it is now, if the government controls all regulations and rules and laws across the board, then there's really no difference between us or they're doing their best to change the differences to where we're all the same. And there's no individuality in that, and I don't really care for that, so. I highly believe in freedom of speech, even if you don't like people. I don't think you should incite people to hurt others. I think that's unbelievably wrong. And quite frankly, pathetic 
if you would incite people to hurt others. And no one seems to get that. They don't seem to get this idea that many people, many, many people do not know how to make decisions and form their own opinions. And so they listen to what others say. And if you are one of those voices that's encouraging violence, some people who are confused or who've never learned to make critical judgments of their own will follow the loudest voice and start being violent or hurting people. Do I think movies can inspire violence? Sure. Do I think that we should control movies because of that? No. I think you determine as a parent when you're raising your children, okay, I'm not gonna let you go see rated or movies with violence until this age and then punish them not by physically smacking them or anything, but maybe a good spanking would do from time to time, but by grounding them, limiting their privileges and saying, when you're 18, go do whatever you want. But until then, I have rules of my household and that ends up helping people to create their own rules later on in life. And determining what works best for them, but it creates a foundation for really making up your own mind about what you're ultimately going to do. Because when you're 18, you can decide to go see horror movies or rated R films and decide, eh, they're really not that big of a deal to me. But if you just always do it and you go with a fad and you don't have rules when you're younger, you can fall into things because you're more easily manipulated. I mean, it's just reality. That just happens. And we live in different times than when King Tut was around and he was 14 ruling a world. They were raised from the time they were young to be ready for work and rule because of the lifespan people had. I saw something uh, interesting. I think this was before. No, this was after the last video. As you may or may not know, Donald Trump went to uh, Baton Rouge to offer assistance and to survey the damage. He and uh, VP nominee Mike Pence, uh, President Obama and Hillary Clinton have not gone yet. Obama has decided to stay on vacation, although I think his vacation was over on Sunday, and he's supposed to be going on Tuesday. And Democrat nominee Clinton and Tim Kaine have not made a trip down there. She took the weekend off. And uh, I think that tells you a lot about them. Obama specifically tells you that his term is over. He can't be reelected. So now he's showing really how much he gives a darn about what's happening to those people. And I think that is unbelievably shallow and arrogant and inconsiderate. And I think he should be unbelievably ashamed of himself, but he's not because he never really cared in the first place. All he's ever wanted to do was incite division among people. And we're not just talking about racially, we're talking economically, socially. All he's attempted to do was 
disrupt this country. And mission accomplished. And Hillary Clinton, she's never really cared about anyone more than herself. She spouts a lot of jargon about how she cares about women's rights and equal rights for everyone. But when those people in Florida were murdered, she showed no real compassion. She never con uh, congratulated the other Olympic athletes who were doing so well. She complimented one person from one religion because they wore a piece of headgear that was, or uh, clothing that was recognizing of their religion. What about all the people who did amazing? We had a hundred plus gold medals at the Olympics from America. Way more, almost twice as much as China and more than any other country. And instead of complimenting all those athletes, she recognizes one person who number one didn't even do that well, but number two for a religious item when I thought it was supposed to be no religion was more important than another. What about all those athletes who wear crosses around their neck? You can compliment them. I mean, what kind of divisive behavior and divisive agenda do you have when you do that kind of stuff? I just think she's unbelievably corrupt and she will damage this country more than Obama would, Taz. Not to mention the fact that she has lied so many times. Unbelievable. Unbelievable that she gets away with it. But where I was going originally before I got annoyed with what I've heard from them is there was a gentleman who was trapped among the people in Baton Rouge. She was one of the victims of the flooding. And he did a video on Facebook and he said, what I, want, what I want to know is where are the Black Lives Matter boats? Where are the Black Panther boats? Where are all these people who say they care about black people? Because Baton Rouge has a dominant number of African American people living there. Black Americans, whatever your preference is. They're people. But when it comes to groups that want to identify themselves as pro-black groups, why weren't they there? Now there is one minor correction that I would have to make to his statement. I don't think the Black Panthers were not necessarily present. Uh, one, one of the people from the Cajun Navy, which was a group that was formed specifically to assist in this uh, flooding incident, this disaster, I think it was the Saturday before, or maybe the Friday before. Either way, they, um, he said that one night he was with a number of homeless people under a bridge and along with the Cajun Navy, there were members of the Black Panther Party that were there. They were helping as much and they had all come together and put race aside and political opinions aside to help people. However, Black Lives Matter has more of a voice than the Black Panthers do right now. And they have vastly more money than the Black Panther Party has. The Black Panther Party is really a grassroots uh, effort. And I'm not supporting any violence that they do. But they're not the same as B BLM. BLM is a money-making organization. 
they have over a hundred million dollars. I mean, for all we know, it could be nearly two. But they get unbelievable support from these groups. And someone said they're not a relief effort because people were like, why are you, why aren't they there? The one person said, well, they're not a relief group. They're an activism group. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if your sole purpose is activism. Because look, as long as you have a hundred million dollars in your bank account or more, you can give 30 million dollars of it or 20 million or 10 for crying out loud to help people. When there was a hundred thousand plus people displaced by that flood, you could put your money where your mouth is to say you really care about black people. And if you don't want to help the white people, that's fine. Don't help them. But those black people, if you specifically wouldn't stick with your ethnicity, then get off your butt and help those people. More than 100,000 people displaced. I'm sorry, you can afford a couple of boats, even if you don't want to buy them, to rent them, to get out there. Work with the local law enforcement and rescue groups and assist or at least financially give them the means to do it if you don't want to get off your butt and do it yourself. Those people are suffering. And how dare you proclaim to care about them when you have done nothing, nothing to help them as a group. Now, maybe individuals who are within the group have done something, and I applaud them for helping, but let me tell you something. BLM does not care about black people. It's not what they're about. Because if they did, they would be putting money into stopping the violence that's going on in Chicago, which is also a predominantly black community. Like I said, you don't like white people, don't help them. I care less if you do that. But stand up for the people you say you care about. 4,000 people in the past eight years have been killed in Chicago. Black Lives Matter has been around for what? Three or four years now? Where are your efforts in Chicago to create community groups to stop violence? See, it's really not about helping people in the black community. They are a money-making organization and they do everything they can to divide people. They really don't care about them. And I think it is deplorable, absolutely deplorable that those people are suffering and you're not there to help them. I'd say you should be ashamed of yourself, but clearly you don't care. And it's disappointing that you could treat, if you don't want to help people of other ethnicities, that's fine. But that you could treat anyone of your specific ethnicity as you see it in that way is so inhumane. I get irritated with people like that, just like I do with the KKK and white supremacy groups and the whole thing like that. That's just so, it's so pathetic. You do everything you can to divide us. And, and you don't have any shame, otherwise I'd tell you to be ashamed of yourself. And you have no integrity. None whatsoever. I believe in borders and overpopulation in the country, which is why I think illegal immigration needs to be stopped because we need to assimilate people into the society. We need to level out the field because we have so many people out of work and the whole thing. But there's a difference between closing the borders and controlling the population so that everybody can get, as many people as possible can get back to work. There's a difference between that and just outright racism or using people to make money. Pretending to be in favor or in support of where they come from. It's just, I went way over. All right. <laughs> Everybody breathe. Five deep breaths and then we'll go. Let the stress fall away. Do your best to give back to the world today.
remember we all have challenges and the best thing we can do is help each other. Remember there are so many beautiful things in the world. Remember your friends and family and the people who make you smile. Remember, as long as we have this day, we can do something good for the world. Okay, go enjoy your day. Smile a lot, look for some fun stuff to make you laugh, and I'll see you tomorrow. Be well.